It's Friday. You know what that means. Excited, nervous, don't sleep on. There is lots more to discuss about this Kentucky game, and we don't have much time to do it because the dogs tee it up tomorrow evening. Let's talk about it today on the Lockdown Bulldogs podcast. You are Locked On Bulldogs, your daily podcast on the Georgia Bulldogs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back. This is Locked On Bulldogs, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. That man over there is Daniel. This man right here is Clint. Together, we mm. are Captain Planet. Nope. Wait. No. Nope. We are Locked On Bulldogs. That's that's what we are. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time. More on them in a second. Download the Game Time app today for best tickets. Uh, thank you for the everydayers and the first listeners that are on this podcast you guys make our day we do this podcast for you for no one else well and the sad auburn fan and the sad florida fan and the arrogant Bama fan and the the overzealous tennessee fan we do it here for you all too but mainly for the Mm -hmm. everydayers loyal third second listeners daniel uh teased it in the open we're gonna talk about what we're excited about sure what we're nervous about Mm -hmm. and what you shouldn't be sleeping on whatsoever for this uh, this game, this competition up at Kroger Field. Daniel, let's start what we're excited about. We've seen lots of good things from Georgia so far. Game one had the, the Frazier coming out party. Mm-hmm. It was oh, fantastic. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. that was so good. Game two saw Carson Beck with surgical accuracy. Spread it so around. Spread yeah. it around. Say, I don't care. Are you, a, are you an eligible receiver for Georgia? Great. You'll get Here. the ball. Take Here. this. Hold this for me. Uh, game three, what are you mm-hmm. excited about as we go up to Kroger Field in Kentucky, Daniel? Yeah, I'm excited um, about the other side of the football. I'm going to talk about the defense here, Clint. Okay. Um, I'm excited to watch this young secondary really begin to find themselves as we get into sec play obviously a road game at kentucky a bye week and then the first let's just be honest we're not kirby smart we're allowed to look ahead i'm fine saying so we're not not looking ahead we're looking ahead yeah um the first of the big ones is after this after the bye week and so Um, what I know about Kentucky is that they have really struggled to throw the football to this point in the season. What I know about Alabama is that they have to this point in the season really struggled to throw the football except down the field, except deep down the field. They've really struggled in the little things they've really struggled in pass protection in Alabama. And so I do think that there are some overlaps between what Georgia's defense is able to do in this game and what we are hoping to see Georgia's do defense do, albeit against a much uh, more talented opponent in two weeks in Tuscaloosa. And so I am excited to see the pass rush, even without Michael Williams, um, who will not be playing in this game. I'm excited to see the pass rush, Jalen Walker, um, Damon Wilson, and company get after the quarterback, see if we can disrupt the what appears to be an awful offensive line for Kentucky. I'm excited to see us in the backfield consistently in this game. And then I'm excited for some off-balanced, rushed, hope and a prayer, put it up in the air, type of throws from because this quarterback Daniel <laughs> quarterback who, at Kentucky. Who in the backfield for us on the defensive side? That's what I'm saying here is we've got guys I think that might eat a little bit on the back end here because I think the pass rush will be there. And so the combination of pressure up front creating some sacks, maybe some maybe some strip sack turnover situations, but also forcing the Kentucky quarterbacks when the run game isn't there to put the ball up in the air and um and maybe that that gives our secondary a chance to eat a little bit as well. So that's what I'm excited about watching this defensive side of the ball um 
with an eye on this game, but also just in the back of my mind. We will have already seen Alabama play Wisconsin earlier in the day, and so we'll have a little bit better of an idea of yeah. did they fix some things on the offensive line or some things settled on the offensive line there. Yep. So, But I'll have one eye on this game. I'll have one part of my brain will already be looking ahead to this Alabama game, which you could let me know in the comments is foolish. Whatever. I don't care. I'm not the coach of the team, and so I'm going to – I'm going to do it. It costs you nothing to look ahead to Alabama. It costs Kirby Smart and Glenn Schumann, who, by the way, good on you, Glenn, and the rest of the coaching staff for getting your pay bump. Glenn, those four years. That well, you he got, doesn't. Did he, does he deserve the money even though, Glenn? Does he? Likely not, because he wasn't coveted by literally every program in the Bama fan. Man, you wanted him. You, you, you wanted, wanted him, him. but you didn't get him. But you didn't get him. No. Uh, Glenn, I'd love to see. You know what? I'm going to invite you out to my kid's graduation at the end of those four years. You ride out that four year contract. Why don't you just ride it out? We'll come just on, <laughs> ride it out. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't cost us anything, it costs them everything. They're focused on Kentucky. Yeah. I think what are you excited thing. about, Glenn? Here's what I'm excited about. Uh, I am watching before my eyes, and I think this is going to be a a, a bit of a confidence boost for that Alabama game. If Ingram Dawkins can continue his ascent this year, because hmm. if y'all ain't paying attention to Ingram Dawkins on the inside oh, no. of this defensive line, why don't you start putting eyeballs this game? Kentucky is going to need to run the football. Um, Brock Vandegriff is a very, very, very poor man's version of Milrow. Okay. I, very <sighs> poor man's version Ow. of Milrow. I never I, even heard of a man so poor <laughs> because. Yes. Like that. It's real bad. We're, we are talking about destitute, impoverished this, to the extreme. This man, this man has a Taurus and it's got three <laughs> wheels. Okay. Um, that's how yep. destitute we are. Uh look, if Ingram Dawkins can get pressure up the middle and can contain the run that, that Vandegrift is gonna want to do, because that's that's all he has. Um, and follow me for the don't sleep on segment in Kentucky's personnel decisions for the third segment. Come on back for that. Cause I got something there for you, but I'm excited to watch Ingram Dawkins and this defensive line, Kristen Miller as well. Um, we're going to need them very, very early and often in Alabama. If they win the line of scrimmage, I feel extremely confident going into Tuscaloosa. So I'm excited to see that. The second thing I'm excited about, um, I think this is a get right game. I, I, Branson, get right, baby. I'm excited mm. for a get right game. I think Kirby Smart, if you look at everything, forecast of the weather and the game itself and what they do on offense and what we do on defense, I think their defense is scrappy and good. We've we've commented on that before. Um, Branson, get going. If you get going on this and we got Frazier and we got ETN and we got Branson and the defense, if those two things happen for me, which I think they will, uh, I'm. I am very, very pleased with the outcome of this mm -hmm. game. I think we handle it, and we go into Kroger Field, and we we easily come back with a hard fought win. That's what I'm excited to see. Those two names are paramount to me. We're gonna come back and tell you what we're nervous for, but mm -hmm. first, these and these are in fact eBay Motors. eBay Motors, fantastic. Your ride or die doesn't need to die because every single part that oh. you need right now, millions of parts for your MVP can be had at ebaymotors.com. eBay Motors has this incredible opportunity for you to put your make, model, year of your car into the garage. And once you click on a part, the part will say, this fits or does not fit, guaranteed fit. And if it's wrong, if eBay has fooled you somehow, which they won't, but if somehow they, they it mistakes, they're going to make it right. They're going to get the right part. They're going to give you your money back. They're going to make it right. They have incredible customer service. This guarantee is only available for U.S. customers, whether it's performance, whether it's exterior, interior, maintenance, or upgrades. eBay Motors has your spot. The number one place for your ride or die. Daniel and I love them. We use them all the time for our cars yeah. that we must keep going because without them, Got our to. lives come to a halt with all the activity that we have going on ebay motors millions apart for your mvp but that's not all we also have linkedin daniel linkedin's fantastic um yeah. they can find anybody any job anywhere because you know why they have millions and millions of people on this job site linkedin.com slash locked on college 
we know small businesses wear many, many hats and LinkedIn has the opportunity for AI advancement to go ahead and filter through applications as well as write descriptions that gets you the right person for your team or for you to be put on the correct team. Kind of like Dillingham over at Arizona State, Daniel. It's fantastic. What three and oh. Arizona State. Arizona State, things. big win over Texas State. I love LinkedIn, Clint, because it's not just a job board. You know what I'm trying no. to say? A lot of people think LinkedIn, they think they think job board. LinkedIn yeah. helps you hire professionals that you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for new jobs. Listen, I'm not out here actively searching for a new job, but if somebody wants to make me an offer, somebody can come on out, make me an offer. That's the beauty of LinkedIn, find the perfect person for the perfect role. In any given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites, but they're always on LinkedIn. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. That's what we're excited about. Um mm -hmm. We both think we're going to win this game. George is going to win this game in Lexington on Saturday. Neither of us are nervous about taking an L, which just goes to show you this could be an all-timer for a Saturday night overreaction show. It could Grab be, a bucket. There Grab. could be a real situation brewing on Saturday night late. It's going to be a late one. Okay, so stay up. So let me I just – let me – I'm going to try to reiterate Go to you. On. Go on. We have all day mm, yes. for us yeah. to, to to get ourselves right yeah. for a okay. game. That's a way. Then we have a game it. in which we are supremely confident. Sure. Sure. In the SEC road game at night, which uh -huh. always goes according to plan. Sure. And then we are going to come back up on here. We're putting, our, putting our dumb faces live on the mics right here on YouTube. So. If you're not already subscribed, by the way, pushing 10,000 subscribers on YouTube. Look at if you're not manual. one of them already, find Come your on. way over there. Get on over there. Saturday Night Overreaction Show is worth the subscription all uh, in and of itself. All right. If we're not worried about taking an L, Clint, what are we nervous about in this game? Here's, here's what I'm nervous about. Daniel, I, I am nervous. And this is this is. A little kind of like Michael Scott. What's what's your worst attribute? Is that mm. I? Oh I yeah, you're nervous yeah. that we're too good. No, I'm not <laughs> nervous about that. I, I'm here's what I'm I'm nervous, mm. and and I shouldn't be saying this because I'm not the head coach Kirby Smart, and I I'm not Glenn Schumann, and I have no right to say anything about personnel decisions. Okay. As we look at the schedule coming up, and as I've put eyeballs on two games thus far, interesting. I have made some observations about personnel on the field that I really appreciate and I love and I'm glad are here. But if I'm looking after the bye week and I'm looking at Tennessee so far, who looks real good. No, Alabama. don't tell Georgia fans that. Georgia fans are no, not ready. No, no just trust me, Clint. They're not ready. <laughs> they are not ready to have that conversation. I've been having that conversation in my head for a long time. And guys, mm -hmm. my prediction to begin the season that we're taking an L to Tennessee at home is increasing. Uh, they're a good squad. We look at Alabama, and I know who Milrow is, and he's he's the same. It doesn't matter that yeah, the that guy that beat our rear end last year in the most meaningful game Coulson. of the season. Yeah, cool. That's who he is. I need, and this defense is ascending. This defense is doing yes, great sir. and doing well. The times mm -hmm. they have been most efficient, the times that they have been most impressive, has been with KJ Bolden on the field. I'm nervous mm -hmm. that in a game like Kentucky, sure, 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 lesser talent can look real good. And Dan Jackson, I love you, and I'm glad you're here. And that is not tongue in cheek. That is meant with a hundred percent sincerity. Sure. You tell me, Georgia fan, Dan Jackson versus uh, uh, Brock Vandegrift. Okay, uh, fine. I feel good. Dan Jackson versus Milrow in an alley. You just tell me your confidence meter. Where is it ticking? Or KJ Bolden versus Milrow in an alley. I know where mine is. My confidence meter is KJ Bolden a thousand percent. My nervousness is that we're going to see some guys perform very well in this game against Kentucky that might give us a false sense of security heading into the teeth of our schedule, Daniel. Now, again, mm -hmm. 
Do I think Kirby and Glenn are that stupid? No, of course not. They're going to play the best people. Do I also think that Kirby rewards those who make safe decisions and, and assignment yeah. football? Yes, I do. He, he does. Okay. It's why we got the good Carson, uh, um, the good sets and bidding because he didn't turn over the ball. He was given the reins and he turned out to be the best quarterback in college football history. I'm nervous though. The skill definition and difference between those two, I need KJ Bolden on the field to begin the game against Alabama. And I know that's a true freshman on the road in Tuscaloosa. What are you talking about, Clint? You tell me. You look at the eyeballs. You look at Dan Jackson coming to a hole and trying to make a tackle, and you tell me he can take on Milrow. I'm nervous about that because he's going to look good against Vandegrift. I'm going to go. I'm going to stick on the defensive side of the ball, which means we should be nervous about the offensive side of the ball. Yeah. Um, and it's hard. It's hard. like we're both going to say something about the defense that we're nervous about when Kentucky is clearly better on defense against our offense than they are on offense against our defense. But I'm going to go right back to where something you were excited about, Clint. I'm going to go to the defensive line, particularly the interior of the defensive line. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I love Ty Ingram Dawkins and what he's done this year. I love Kristen Miller and what he's done this year. I love the playing time that some of the young guys have gotten this year. Obviously, Nas Stackhouse is who he is, and we love him, yep. and he's fantastic. Yep. He is. Part of the reason that guys like Ty Ingram Dawkins have been able to shine this year, though, is because Warren Brinson, Xavier McLeod, have not been out there on the field. They have not been getting the snaps. The 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 defensive line rotation is a little thinner than we want it to be. That's all well and good against Tennessee Tech. Jamal Jarrett's all well and good against Tennessee Tech. Yeah. Joseph Jonah Ajayi is all good, and that's all fine and good against Tennessee Tech. This is a different animal. I'm just going to go – I'm just going to want to make sure I'm very clear so that I'm ahead of this. There's no way Kentucky's as bad as they are, as they looked against South Carolina. There's no way they're actually that bad. That was that was an anomaly within how that, that that algorithm didn't do well in the computer system. Something came out really odd. I could almost guarantee you Kentucky's going to look better on offense versus Georgia than they did against South Carolina. And that's mm. going to make a lot of people feel a lot of feelings inside of them, especially when the aforementioned Tennessee fan jumps on social media and lets you know that South Carolina held Kentucky to six points and Georgia gave up nine points or 10 points or 12 points against Kentucky. That I can almost guarantee that that's, that's going to be what happens because there's no way Kentucky's this bad. And I think the area that Kentucky's going to listen, this game plan is going to be focused. They're going to try to do everything that they can to shorten this game and to make yards and points any way that they can on offense. Yeah. That is going to involve trying to attack the middle of this defense. Now I love what we have in CJ and Raylan. Yeah. But the run game of Kentucky, they know they can't pass protect against no. Georgia. And so they're going to try to run the ball. They know they can't get wide against Georgia because we're too fast. I mean, maybe I mean Barry and Brown is really fast and really athletic, and so he's, they've got some he's guys. He's the that fastest can get guy on the field when he's on the field. He's the fastest one. Sure, but they're going to try to attack the middle of this defense. If Warren Brinson and Xavier McLeod still aren't in there, you know, I'm starting to feel some feelings about this. I love what Ingram Dawkins has done. I love what Kristen Miller's done. As I said. I don't want those guys to have to carry the weight of so many step, snaps. Those three guys, like Stackhouse, Miller, and Ingram Dawkins, I do not want them to have to carry the weight of so many snaps because Mark Stoops, A, is stubborn. B, knows that there's only one way that he can hope to advance the ball in this game. So he's not going to give up. Even if the score is 21 to nothing, he doesn't they're care. still going to keep trying to push against the middle of that defense yeah. And wear us down. I, I'm nervous that we're going to see some chinks in the armor in the middle of that defensive front. And then I, I hate to go back to it, but then two weeks from now, 
Okay. See? We head on the road to Tuscaloosa, and the middle of the defensive front seems to be a little bit exposed. And we all of a sudden we're talking about a situation where no. it's just quarterback power, halfback power with with Alabama and Okay. So just to be clear, Daniel's nervous about it. He's not predicting that to happen. He's nervous about it because if that's the case, it has large ramifications going forward. Sure. I'm excited for Ingram Rock because if he shows out and balls out here, like I said, all of a sudden, two weeks from now, ramifications um, going forward. Just you see, just in the graph mm -hmm. goes two different ways, and it's the ships be passing each other in the night, Clint. That's that's who we are. All right. We've got things that we're excited about, things that we're nervous about, but also some things that maybe we're thinking about that we don't think you're thinking about that we're going to talk about next. But first, we'll let you know about Factor Meals. Factor Meals mm -hmm. fantastic, Daniel. If you don't know about them, I know you do because you and I, I love healthy, quick, delicious, taken care of, prepared meals for you and I. We're getting to the point in our lives, Daniel, where uh, that Jack in a Box, that Taco Bell, that oh, no. it, ain't, it ain't for us anymore. But you Factor Meals... Yeah, can't can't do that. Uh, yeah. Factor Meals is fuel up with factors, no prep, no mess meals. Meet your wellness goals thanks to the menu of chef crafted meals with opinion with options like calorie smart, protein plus, and keto. And it just takes two minutes, so no matter how busy you are, you'll always have time to enjoy nutritious, great tasting meals. There are thirty five different meals and more than sixty add ons to choose from each and every week. Make your day delicious from breakfast to dessert. Stay fueled with easy, nutritious options. Keep kitchen time to a minimum. Factor Meals are ready to eat in two minutes. No shopping, prepping, cooking, or cleanup. Enjoy effortless support of your lifestyle. Choose from six menu preferences. Help you ma manage calories, maximize protein intake, avoid meat, or simply eat well-balanced. Head to factormeals.com slash college 5050 Use code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month. That's code LOCKEDONCOLLEGE50 at factormeals.com slash college 50 to get 50% off your first box plus 20% off your next month while your subscription is active. Nervous, excited, taken care of. Segment one to two. Segment three is don't sleep on what you may be thinking to yourself can't happen, but we're not we're not calling our shot, but we're just saying there's a higher chance than you think of this taking place at Kentucky game. Daniel, what should the people not be sleeping on? Um, don't sleep on. I got a couple, but this I'm going to start with this one. Don't sleep on the diversity of weapons utilized being a trend, not a fad. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm yes. trying to say here? So like we're typically what you will see is that when teams play lesser opponents, now Georgia's only played one lesser opponent as opposed to say an old miss or a Missouri well, Clemson didn't go beat the head in of another team after playing us, Daniel. Georgia's only played one lesser opponent, but we've been telling you this is the Carson Beck offense. This is the Carson Beck skill set, and Georgia has the exact personnel that they need to exploit this. I, don't sleep on whoever your guy is at receiver. Like, and we all have a guy, like maybe you're a big Don Lovett fan. Like, and Sure. More power to you. You should be. Maybe you're a big London Humphreys fan and you're beside yourself that he didn't have a catch against Tennessee Tech. Uh, maybe you're a big Colby Young fan, like my man over there in the other oh, window. Right maybe here. you're a big fan of Lawson Lucky and you made a prediction that he was going to be the go-to tight end before the season started. And lo and behold, you were correct about that. Don't sleep on your guy not getting force fed all the targets that you think your guy should be force fed because this offense where it gets spread around where Carson Beck gets a lot of numbers, but nobody else really gets very many numbers for Georgia. I don't think it's going anywhere, even against a Kentucky defense where you would think the cream would begin to rise to the top. I think we're still going to see a lot of guys play. And I still think we're going to see a lot of guys have success when their number is called, albeit less often than maybe you would see in a different offensive system. So that's my first don't sleep on. What's your where are you where are you going 
first, Clint? What should the people not be sleeping on? Don't sleep on and this game in particular, I, I think because of the way the passing is, and, and my man over on the other one is going to be thrilled to hear me say this, but don't sleep on Ellis Robinson getting more snaps this game mm. than other DBs. Mm. And I think because if we look at Ellis Robinson, the thing that he has, our, our corners, we've been very pleased with so far in this game. And news breaking this morning, uh, Daniel, don't know if you've seen it come across, but uh, Daniel Harris uh, has decided that reckless driving is also a thing for him as well. Fantastic. So um, he's been charged reckless driving, driving without a seatbelt, illegal tent, and unregistered car, no proof of insurance. Uh, let me let me summarize that. He's an idiot. Yes. Um, sure. Don't look at reckless driving because reckless driving in Georgia includes this, and I'm not kidding. This is a legal definition. Uh, driving too fast for the road or weather conditions. That's... That's a that's a legal. So that's like a hundred miles an hour over the speed limit. Is that what no, it is? No. If a police officer deems five miles over the speed limit to be uncertain for the road conditions that they deem necessary at the time, you could be charged with it. So, hold on. He's he's an idiot. This uh, no license, but all that. Yes. What sure. are you doing in life, Ellis Robinson? Uh, I think is going to get a lot of snaps. And I think if we were talking about the thing on Kentucky that maybe makes you and I nervous of the run game, they, they're going to push it. But also that speed. Daniel, a wide receiver. They they have that. What does Ellis Robinson have, Daniel? Can, can he motor on down the field? He got a little speed. He got some speed to him. I think don't sleep on his snap count being significantly increased in this game because of the matchup, because of what we want him to do. And, and this could be a trend ongoing for the rest of the year. Don't sleep on that. You have another one. I have one final one to end us. What else should we not be sleeping on? I said it. I said it when we did the locks. I gave a lock in this game. I took the under. You did. I, I'm just so surely you're not still sleeping on it. Do not care about the final score of this game, Georgia fans. Please don't care about the final score of this game. Do not sleep on Kirby Smart trying his best to shorten this game yep. as much as he possibly can. The weather's going to be bad. He is going to be looking to get out of town and get into that bye week. And prepare for Alabama. That's all he wants to do is get on the plane and start he, watching film of Alabama. That's you don't need Kirby's translation. He has said before a road win the SEC. I don't care about. I want to get in, do business, and go home. He said this. He likes Mark Stoops. He does not want to run it up on Mark Stoops. He does not care about the final score of this game. So you mentioned Branson getting it going. I think Kentucky's run defense is, is actually pretty good. South yeah. Carolina's a better running team than they are a passing team. They only rushed it for 82 yards last yes. week, and they destroyed Kentucky. Only 82 yards rushing as a team. I expect Georgia to lean on that run game in the second half a lot. Like a lot. Um, I don't know what the score is going to be. I think that it could be... I, I mean, I think the margin could be like 14, 17, 10 points. Like, I think it could be a low scoring game. If you took Georgia minus 24 and a half, Godspeed to you. I I don't know that we cover this number, but no. um, I really don't think there's going to be a ton of points scored in this game. So maybe it's 35 to nothing. And, you know, but Georgia blows them out. Either way, I think you're not looking at a lot of points and you're looking at Kirby Smart really trying to shorten this game and potentially struggling a little bit to run the football when we need to. This will, I'll say this, this will be the first indication of whether or not Georgia can run the football when they need to yep. run the football yep. this year. I don't know that the Clemson situation, it's not because of the way that that game played out, I don't know that that really tells you a lot. If Georgia no. gets up in this game against this Kentucky defense on a sloshy field at night in Lexington and tries to just Branson Robinson and Trevor Etienne their way to a victory, I think that's going to like can is this offensive line up to the task? Is yes. are they able to get four five yards a chunk and you know have a nine minute touchdown drive to you know in the fourth quarter? 
to end the game, a Kirby Death March. So don't sleep on on that if you're a Georgia fan and not necessarily getting the final score that you want. Don't care about the final score. Care about a win, but also don't sleep on this. Kirby Smart, exactly what Daniel said. I think the run game is going to be crucial in this. And I think if I've already seen early indications, we've seen more than a six-man rotation on the offensive line. I was told six-man coming out of camp. No, 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 no. Don't sleep on Bobo showed me some things last game, Daniel. It was Tennessee Tech. I get it. I understand. Does he get it, though? Does he get it? Comment section. Does he even get it? Let me know. I'm an idiot. (laughs) This is true. I think the offensive line sees a couple more rotational movements in this because to your point, Kirby wants to know who are the dogs that want to go eat because I'm going to need you all for the long haul and I'm going to need you all to go into two tough places, three tough places. And when when it's gut check time, I'm going to need you to just maul a man in front of you. And early indications are, there's seven, eight guys rotating through. Micah Morris playing a lot more. Freeling playing a lot more. So, yep. Okay. So don't sleep on that happening in this game as well. He is Daniel. I am Clint. This is Locked On Bulldogs, part of Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single day. Come back for the overreaction show on Saturday night. It's going to be hilarity regardless. Be Just buckle up. It's going to be fun. Uh, we'll see you guys then. See ya.